Good morning, dear friends, and greetings to all of you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are on this side of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have learned a number of truths of events that happened during the Passion Week which climaxed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ last Sunday. And now that we are on this side of the cross, in these two days I would like to meditate with you about the purpose of Jesus Christ in choosing his 12 disciples, designating them apostles. What was the purpose? Why did Jesus Christ choose these? Among the, he has so many disciples and from among them he chose 12 and designated them apostles. The purpose of Jesus coming to this earth in human flesh was to accomplish the work of salvation by going to the cross to offer his body to be broken and his blood to be shed. This is something that a man could never accomplish, never do. Salvation is absolutely from God and it is given to us by God Almighty alone. Man could not save himself because he is the one who needs salvation and salvation mainly means forgiveness of his sin and this forgiveness has to be given by God who is holy because it was against him mankind has sinned. This is the good news and this is the gospel that today it is possible for every member of a human race to reestablish a personal relationship, everyone, with this God who created us for himself but separated from him by sin. It is now possible by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and his sufferings for us and his death on the cross and his resurrection. By these truths, we shall be saved if we are willing to accept the death of Jesus Christ as the sacrifice for our sin and come to God in humility and repentance and acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior. And that's the way we can establish this relationship with God. And this is the good news. And this is for every member of human race. From every tribe, every kindred, every language, every civilization, and every people, and every, every uh, nation must hear this good news. And therefore, it was necessary for Jesus to have his disciples because the purpose of his coming was to open a way of salvation. And now that there is this way open for everyone, this is the good news and everyone must know about this wonderful salvation that God himself has prepared and arranged for us to enjoy. And for this purpose, he had these disciples. He chose 12 from all his disciples and designated them apostles. And once he leaves 
and go back to his father from whom he came, he totally depended on these disciples who are now apostles to take his message of salvation to the entire world. And that is the commission he gave. Just before or the day he ascended into heaven, he was with his disciples. And as this moment of ascension came, he spoke to them and gave them this commission. You go into all the world and preach the gospel or the kingdom of God to every creature and then make nations my disciples by baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then by teaching them everything that I have taught you. And that is why he has his disciples. And this is one of the reasons why Jesus taught them what he taught them. For three and a half years, they were with him and he taught them. The first purpose was to make his own disciples, these 12 disciples, mighty men of God. And so he trained them, he taught them, but unfortunately they were very slow in understanding, so he had uh, uh, some difficulties in uh, helping them to grow in their faith and love and understanding. But many things he spoke to them, they didn't understand until after his resurrection and then more things they understood since the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon them. And once the Holy Spirit came, as Jesus promised, what a change, what a transformation happened to them. They were totally new, bold, courageous, certain people of God. Not afraid of authorities, not afraid even to die for Jesus Christ. Now, in choosing these two 12 disciples, he had a twofold purposes. And this is mentioned in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 3, verse 12, I think. There are two purposes was mentioned. He chose them. Number one, that they may be with him. And number two, then he may send them forth to do the work that he began to do. The same work that includes preaching the kingdom of God and also performing miracles, including casting out demons and cleansing the lepers and raising the dead and healing all manner of sicknesses. This was the ministry. And so first, they must learn to be with Jesus. Because you can know a person intimately, not by meeting that person or talking to them once in a while, but by being with that person constantly. In a human relationship, a husband and wife know each other so very well. A husband knows his wife better than anyone else knows. And the wife knows the husband the same way. And Jesus knows this. And so it was his desire that his disciples must learn to be with him. And there are two means God has provided by which applying these means we too can be with Jesus Christ. And that is his desire for all of us as his followers. He wants his followers, his disciples, his people to be with him constantly. Now what are these two means? Number one, the word of God. Now the word of God, the Bible, must be read and meditated upon. And then we listen to the teachings and hear the preaching of saintly people. 
and by doing this we are learning and knowing Jesus Christ better and better you see we know that the word of God the Bible is the written word Jesus personally is the living word as according to the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 1 John says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was from the beginning with God and everything was created by him and through him nothing was created without him that has been created and then in verse 14 he says this word became flesh and lived among us now who has come in the flesh Jesus Christ the second person of the Holy Trinity he came in the flesh the word became the flesh so Jesus Christ is the living word and the Bible is the written word both are the same by following the scriptures learning the scriptures meditating upon the scriptures walking according to the commandments of the scriptures and uh, being obedient to the word of God and uh, uh, listening to the word of God and telling others from the word of God you are learning and knowing Christ better and better and better and we have been given the Holy Spirit who is the best teacher he will lead us into all the truth of the word and so my brothers and sisters you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the best teacher of God's word he will reveal to you the truth that otherwise cannot be understood so that is the first means that we must employ to be with Jesus and the second means is by 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 uh, praising worshiping praying and bringing our petitions and our needs with thanksgiving to God now this word prayer is involved the prayer is involved all these things there is thanksgiving there there is praising there there is worshiping there and then at the end we bring our needs to God in prayer and when we constantly employ these two means we are drawing nearer and nearer to God and we are with God and so I want you to know my brothers and sisters that by ignoring and neglecting these two things we will never grow in the knowledge of God Apostle Paul therefore praying for the believers in Ephesians one of the prayers he prayed was Lord I pray that God will give you a spirit of revelation and a spirit of prophecy and a spirit of wisdom that you may know him better here is the means available to you employ them don't neglect and these are the days we need it we need to do it more and more and Jesus said draw near to me and I will draw near to you here is the means by which we can near to God apostles what did they say we will not uh, give ourselves to dealing with the daily affairs and business affairs of the church that you can do among yourself but we will give ourselves to prayer and to the word of God that's why they were effective they were able to do what Jesus did always so let us not lag behind do it and you will grow amen father I thank you for those who have listened to this this learning this 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 devotion this thought thank you father God you have provided for us everything that we need to apply in our lives
so that we may grow in our knowledge of you and we may grow in our understanding of you and we also may go forth and do your work thank you jesus for helping your people bless them let them grow let them walk with you and learn of you in jesus name amen